uh welcome everyone and welcome to our sessions on artificial intelligence so in the previous sessions we just learned about the basic operations of image processing and what are all the operations that are available in this entire concept of uh, image processing so we learned most of the operations but uh, what we have in picture right now is to do a project so what is the project that we are trying to do is we are trying to do a digit recognition based project so the project that we will be doing is called a digit recognition uh right currently we are doing digit recognition but this can be extended to uh character recognition so character recognition also can be done so then you can even do the other part that is nothing but handwriting recognition so multiple use cases this uh project can be done so what is the basic use of this uh project or how is this project going to help you is we are using the pro, uh, the concept of image processing then we are using the concept of machine learning so what we will try to do is we'll help to we'll help you and uh, we'll help us understand how image processing can help us do some machine learning uh, projects as well as how machine uh, how image processing is helping us generate some data and that can be used in machine learning so the whole concept is using image processing with machine learning that is nothing but our computer vision technology on recognizing something so training some training some images using image processing so making sure that the image is correct so and then applying it to a machine learning algorithm and understanding how actually the learning is happening and we are able to predict some result so this is what is the entire process that we will be doing so what is this entire project all about is pretty simple so what we will do is we will uh, give or we will take an input of nothing but uh, digits in this example but you can modify this project to take in examples of uh, nothing but our uh, alphabets or handwriting or any other language which you want so all those things can be done here so what we will do is we will take an input of uh, number so we have uh, input of number images so 1 2 3 4 5 6 or any kind of numbers will be taken as input here so after taking uh, your digits as input what you need to do is you need to find out the contour and edges so i have already told you what is contour and what is edges so it needs to find out due to the variation in the pixel intensity it needs to find out what are all the uh, what are all the different shapes or contours that is available so with this you can see this is the contour or this is the edges that are available so you can have an edge here also so this is the possible way where you can recognize the digits so step 1 is nothing but you do the contouring so contouring is step 1 so what you actually do is you find out the various boundaries so you you do the contouring part where you find out the boundary so after doing the contouring part what you are able to get is the part of the image for example as i told you one only the pixel intensities of one you are able to get and the contour values of one you are able to get then since uh, your machine learning algorithm or any algorithm for that example doesn't know how uh, what is this particular intensity so if you have a set of images or if you have a set of pixels that is belonging to category like this so what does that even mean so this doesn't mean anything it is nothing but a picture or a set of pixels so what we need to do is we need to give a keyboard input so we need to give a keyboard input so in the keyboard input what we will try to do is we will type manually uh, what is the particular digit so what i will do is i will type manually that this is one so this pixel intensity so if my pixels and the shape of my pixels and the boundaries look like this so then it is considered as one so this as you know the pixel intensities are all in the form of numbers or numerical values so all the picture data as i told you is in the form of matrices or numerical data so we will store them in the form of one dimensional numbers or numerical data so that is what is happening so what we are currently doing i told you first we will try to find out how a one looks like or what are all the contours or boundaries that are available in our image so here we have 1 2 3 so all the different kinds of numbers we are uh, giving it as the input so after giving it as the input using contouring we find out different boundaries so after finding out the contours what we do is we allocate a keyboard input to it so since we are doing a digit recognition project 
we allocate a number so this is 1 because we can see the intensity is 1 so this is 1 so the contour for this res with respect to this is 1 so I am giving 1 as my keyboard input so similarly I will give 2 as the keyboard input and 3 as the keyboard input so what happens is we are doing a mapping so what we are trying to do is we are telling keyboard input is 1 and the corresponding pixels so where we got the pixels we got the pixels from here so all the corresponding pixels and the intensities will be equated so what we are trying to do is one is the keyboard input so alpha numerical value one has pixels equivalent to this so that is what we are trying to equate so this we will apply to a k-means uh, uh, like a k-nearest neighbor algorithm to perform classification so how many numbers can we have so the maximum numbers we can have is nothing but zero to or we can take uh, it from 0 to 9 is the maximum number of numericals that we can have in any uh, numerical values. So we will have 0 to 9 that is 10 values. So whatever intensities we will get. So what we will do is we will give a test image. So inside the test image the machine learning algorithm only tries to find out the contours and it will predict which is that particular contour belonging to which keyboard input is this particular contour belonging to so this is the whole project that we will be doing now so uh, please try to understand the project it is a simple project it is called as a digit recognition project where we give input of images so i'll show you the sample input so this is the input that we are trying to give so this is the input that we are trying to give now what we do is using contouring and other image processing operations we try to find out the boundaries of how a 9 looks, how a 8 looks, how a 2 looks. So after finding out the contours, we will enter a keyboard input. So keyboard input for this pixel will be 9, so I will enter 9. Here keyboard equivalent of uh, like uh, this pixel intensity is 8, so I will enter 8. So what I will do is I will manually type in the number. So this is 9, this is 8, this is 2, this is 1. So I will train this entire set of numbers. So these are all the entire training data set. So for this what I will generate is keyboard responses and the sample. So keyboard responses and sample I will generate. So X, for X and Y I am generating. So X is nothing but my samples. Y is nothing but my keyboard responses. Next what I will do is whenever I... Uh, given another test image. So this is the test image that you want to check out. So Okay, so this is the test image. Now what it should do is it should automatically predict what is this particular intensity. So it will do the contouring again. So it will automatically predict uh, using the K, near, K nearest neighbors algorithm classification algorithm which digit or which number is this intensity values belonging to so that is what is this entire project all about so now what we'll do is since we got this particular data so we'll start uh, writing our python code so how to start writing our python code it is pretty simple so we have this data so this kind of data can be got any how you can take pictures of some characters that you have written or handwriting or then you can uh, go to paint and draw the numericals that is nothing but all the numbers that you want to draw out so that is also that also can be done so anything is okay now so since i've got a ready made data that is nothing but an image which contains different numbers so we'll see how actually to enter uh, code this entire thing so how to start this project is pretty simple so we'll go to idle and i will create a new python program so make sure i'll make sure that the python program is uh, like uh, in the same uh, directory as my image so what i will do is i will first save this python program in the same directory so I will save it as uh, in the desktop itself. So I have project. So I will save it as uh, train. So training is my uh, first program. So we will do two programs here. One is for training and the other one is for testing. So how to do it is pretty simple. So we will uh, import our packages first. So import cv2. That is one package that we already uh, need for all our projects. Then we need to import numpy as np, so we need numpy also because all the like all the things that we get from an image is in the form of numbers. So we have to do some operations to make it to a one dimensional because all the things that we get in the case of uh, an image is in the form of multi dimensional arrays. So I will tell you when we need to convert them and what is the necessity to convert them into single dimensional. Uh, 
single dimension are so this is the important part so how we how or why we need to convert them into single dimension array we'll tell you but we'll see which are all the important next important things so import uh, sys is also needed so system is one of one of the built in library so you don't need to pip install those so it is a built in library you can use it and even uh, why we need sys is particularly because we are uh, taking some input from the keyboard so to take input from the keyboard we need this sys library so that is also important so first step is we imported all these libraries three libraries that we are making use of so after importing these three libraries so we need to import our image so what i will do is i'll create a variable called as im which is cv2 dot im read so which image i should read so uh, the image i should read is nothing but my uh, image that is nothing but train dot png so this train dot png is nothing but the image that i will be used uh, used to create one particular kind of training data so how will i create this training data or why we need to create is pretty simple so whenever you do some image processing operation the data is all in the form of images but all should be in the form of numbers to do some uh, nothing but our machine learning program so step 1 is to create a uh, uh, create a uh, data set that is suitable for machine learning from the images so what i will try to do is i will write try to read this train.png so this is my train.png now i will try to use this cv2.im show to just see what is the uh, particular image so i will write image then uh, im is nothing but my uh, the variable which is storing the image yes so now i can successfully read the image so done is step 1 is done so second thing is uh, in case so this is not necessary we need to convert them into grayscale but before that i will have a copy of my image so i will create an another variable called as im3 so i will use this im dot copy so what does this copy is you are storing a duplicate of this im so im is nothing but the image which you have taken as input that is this train dot png i will save it as a duplicate so why i will save it as a duplicate because i will be displaying that image at the last for comparison that is why i need this duplicate so i don't want to alter anything in my original image so that is why i keep a duplicate in im3 so im dot copy is a, a, a like a ready made function so which will copy the contents of the variable im into im3 so it's very simple to understand we have the duplicate copy in im3 so after that what is the next necessary steps that we need to do is we will convert that image into grayscale so how do you convert that image into grayscale you already know that cv2.cvt color so cv2.cvt color so which image we need to convert into grayscale im is the image so then we need to use cv2.color underscore bgr2 gray so what is what are we doing here we are converting our image which is nothing but a, a regular image to a grayscale image since we have a black and white image it doesn't uh, really matter it almost almost comes to the same value but if you are taking a, an image of your own handwriting then there are chances of uh, some yellow shades or white shades coming that is why we always try to convert them into grayscale so that we have a uniformity in the pictures that we are taking so here it doesn't make any difference because the image is only black, uh, like black and white pixel so there is no other colored pixel so we we convert that into grayscale for a regular cost so other Im it is like a generic program where you can put in other images also okay so after doing that we need to do some blurring operation so why we need to do that blurring operation is pretty simple to understand so whenever we are trying to find out contours or whenever we are trying to find out edges there may be some disturbances like some uh, points or some dots here so when we do those blurring operation that dots will disappear i already told you why we used need to do blurring is to remove some impurities in the image so best example is i will take the example of this so okay i will clear all this whenever i have a small dot here so let us consider a case where i have a small dot here so whenever i do this blurring operation we all know that this surrounding pixel all the surrounding pixel around here will overtake this so this also will be uh, made up with the surrounding pixel so that it can be easily used and it can be removed like this so it can be erased so 
blurring why we do it is to remove some impurities for example whenever i have some points like 3.1416 so i don't need this point to be recognized so i will use blurring to remove this point so that i have only 31416 so very important to understand to remove impurities we are uh, we need to use a blurring operation so these are all the basic operation that we try to do whenever we are trying to do some machine learning projects because this will help us understand how actually we are cleaning the image so how we did that by like titanic uh, uh, project in the case of logistic regression so similarly we need to clean some data here so how do we clean it so we converted into grayscale so that we don't have any color pixels now we do something called as blurring so blurring is nothing but blur is equal to cv2 dot uh, gaussian blur so this is one type of blurring that we have already discussed so gaussian blur is one function so which which thing should we blur so what is the thing that we need to blur is nothing but our gray image we'll try to blur so after blurring our gray image i need to tell what is the size of the blurring matrix so blurring i told you is a morphological image processing function so what do you mean by morphological image processing function this entire image what we take in so that will be converted into small parts so we have the entire image like this so our blurring function is a small matrix that we can consider like a small uh, square matrix so which will uh, flow through this entire image row wise and column wise and do that blurring so we need to mention what is the size of the uh, blurring matrix so phi comma phi is our size so then uh, we will mention the mean value as zero so you can consider the mean value so mean is nothing but for adjustments you can give some mean value or weight value that we will put it as zero so if you want to see what your image entirely looks like you can use this cv2.im show so then here i can just put this name as window then uh, i can use this blur operation here so you can see here uh, you can see the threshold i mean you can see the uh, grayscale operation being take, taking place and also the blurring so it would remove any dots it would remove any impurities using blurring so that is why it uh, removed using blurring so then we what we will do is after blurring also we need to do one more operation called as thresholding operation you already know what is thresholding so thresholding is nothing but converting your grayscale image to a black and white image so why do you want to convert your grayscale image to black and white image because the um, like the text will be more embossed or what we call is the texture or the details of the text will be more so whatever gray pixels i have so if i write something like a word on a piece of paper so i can't press the pen and i write and write it with the same intensity so what happens is sometimes there are there will be very light pixels which will be ignored so for example for a i you will put a dot so if it is a gray uh, like image so you can't recognize the dot because if you have not pressed the like the writing pen properly so what happens is you can't uh, you can't get those values uh, with a greater extent so to get more details to our numbers what we do is we calculate threshold so i will use my variable called as thresh so here we have something called as cv2 dot adaptive threshold so there is a difference between threshold and adaptive threshold so in threshold and adaptive threshold what happens is while we calculate the threshold it will do it for the entire entire image but when we are calculating adaptive threshold it will do it for a smaller size so what is threshold whenever i am telling thresholding what is happening is if uh, my intensity values are greater than threshold so if my intensity values are uh, like greater than threshold what happens is it will be set to my uh, highest value or lowest value depends on what type of thresholding we are doing since we are doing binary thresholding if it is greater than my threshold it will be set to uh, 255 it is less than my threshold it will be set to zero so that is what is happening so we are just converting our grayscale images to either 255 or zero that is nothing but a black and white image that we are doing so why are we doing this to gain more and more details so that is what we are doing so difference between threshold and adaptive threshold threshold will happen all the thresholding op uh, operation will happen to the whole image but in case of adaptive threshold what happens is it will do like a morphological process it will take a small matrix inside this it is trying to find out which is the threshold value and trying to put it put those into 255 and 0 again it will come to this small area and then it is calculating so adaptive threshold is nothing but 
for the entire image it is not doing thresholding once but it is doing step by step so that is what is adaptive threshold so how to do this adaptive threshold is pretty simple you need to tell which image you want to do your adaptive threshold that is my blurred image i want to do my adaptive threshold so then i need to tell my maximum value that is 255 then i need to tell uh, what is the like what is the method of thresholding so there is nothing uh, there is one thing called as recognize boundaries for recognizing boundaries you have uh, the option called as one so you can check out each and every cv2 operation using the cv2 library so best thing is i can i can show you one so if you have doubts regarding any cv2 operation or open cv operation you can go to docs.opencv.org so this will give you documentation of each and every function that is available on open cv so this is the advantage of your uh, particular uh, uh, like a uh, function or this is the advantage of using open cv documentation so every programming language will have documentation so that is what we are telling so what we are trying to do is we are telling the input image is nothing but our blurred image so then we are telling our maximum value is 255 so adaptive method so we have two types of adaptive method border replicated and border isolated so what are what is border replicate and what is border isolated since you know that whenever you are trying to calculate the threshold so what is happening is that is the you have the last threshold part so what you do is border replicate here is so you remove the borders or you don't consider the border so whenever you have the edges if you don't consider the border you isolate the border if you want to consider if you want to consider or if you want to uh, get the image how however the intensity pixels are located you use this border replicate so these are all minor parameters you can ignore them both means the same so that they don't do much of a problem in our small scale based uh, projects so you can choose it as border replicate only not a problem so if you want to choose it as another one you should choose zero for that then you need to tell which method of thresholding so there are binary thresholding and binary inverted thresholding so both are same because we are trying to find contours here or the boundaries so it doesn't matter so we'll choose binary thresholding only so then i need to mention the next thing that is nothing but the size of my particular uh, array or size of my particular thresholding or uh, like matrix so as i told you my thresholding or my uh, adaptive thresholding doesn't happen to my entire image it happens in a small sized way that is with the help of smaller matrices so i should mention the size of the matrix that is nothing but i will choose it as 11 so you can choose it as 10 you can choose it as 5 that depends on the image that you are taking because dip, uh, my image will be different from yours or uh, if you are taking your own handwriting or different image obviously the size will differ because it depends on the detail so you can take 15 you can take 20 you can see how uh, your values are changing with various values of uh, the size of your adaptive thresholding and you can choose respectively so it is it is like you should do the rnd and you should do the trial and error to see which is the best uh, parameter for this so then there is something called as weight or mean so you can give it as zero to nothing uh, that, that is nothing but a correction factor so whenever you are telling that uh, whenever you are uh, this is like a plus or minus uh, factor that you can give so it is nothing but uh, what you call it as uh, like whenever you have you go to a supermarket and you like get a change for something so they round it off right so that is how this is also like a rounding factor or um, like a weight factor that can be used so this is or uh, this is about my uh, threshold adaptive thresholding so why we used adaptive thresholding because entire thresholding will not suit in uh, real time application so what we do is we take in a small matrix where we conduct our thresholding operations and we we are conducting for small parts of the entire image we are not doing it for the entire image at once we are doing it a uh, small uh, small matrix by small matrix so that is what we are doing so if you want to print out you can use cv2.im show then you can print out the image by doing the same thing that was nothing but window i will choose so then i will tell it as threshold so this is how I can print out my thresholded image also. See, when I did my thresholding, so this is binary thresholding, uh, all the, uh, that is binary inverted thresholding, what happened is all the pixels which were black uh, became white, all the things which were actually white became dark so that my text is visible more prominently. So this is what I did. So this will enable me to find the contours very easily. So what are contours? All the boundaries, if you want to find out, you can find out all the uh, boundaries very easily with the help of this so this is how you can 
try to uh, make your image more and more detailed so why we are doing this thresholding why we are doing this blurring is to not miss any factors so what is not missing any factors to take each and every part of an image in detail so that is why we are doing all this operation so next what we will do is we will try to find out our contours so we have already discussed out why contours is nothing but to find the boundaries so i want to find out individual numbers inside my entire image so contours comma hierarchy so hierarchy will tell which is my which is the order in which it is getting uh, like which is the best uh, best found boundary and which is the like worst found boundary depending upon the intensities of the pixels or depending upon the clarity of the image so contours comma hierarchy is nothing but my variables so cv2 dot find contours will find my contours that is nothing but my boundary so again which image i need to find i need to find it for threshold so then i need to tell that what is the thing that it should uh, return so cv2 dot so retr underscore list so what is retr underscore list so retr underscore list is i want only the external boundaries that is nothing but i want only the external uh, external set of contours not the internal contours so i just want the external boundaries to be recognized not internal so that is why this retr underscore list so then i want the coordinates right so even if i find out the contours i need to find out the coordinates so that is why i will use chain approximation simple to find out the coordinates of that particular uh, contour so what is coordinate so i know where the 9 is present or of the boundaries of 9 but i need the points or coordinate points to exactly determine where it is in my image so that is why i need to find out this particular chain approximation simple which will get me the coordinate points okay so now we are able to find out each and every uh, contours that is nothing but each and every contour in our image so what we are able to find out is we have stored all the data in this variable called as contour so this will have each and every information about what are all the different boundaries in that image so 9 is the boundary uh, surrounding 9 is one thing boundary surrounding 1 is one contour so different contours it has found out and it is storing in the variable called as contours but next what we do is so this is just the uh, we are just able to extract the numbers from this entire image so what i have is i have this image so using this image i can now extract the numbers so i can extract the intensity pixels of this numbers but how will the computer know this is 9 this is 8 this is 2 that is why i need to give the keyboard input so whenever this contour is found i need to manually enter 9 8 2 in my keyboard so that my computer will have the uh, data data or the mapping state such that if my pixel intensity looks like this this is 9 so if my pixel intensity or if my contour is like that then it is 8 so since our computer uh, like it, since our computer doesn't know how 9 or 8 looks like we need to give the training or testing data it is like a child process or whenever a child is learning so you are, you should teach your computer like a child so how we are teaching your computer is whenever you are uh, whenever the computer is asking the contour so it is asking me what is this contour so i will tell two so then it is learning from that process so th but this intensity belongs to two so that is that is how it is mapping and learning so main thing is mapping here so what we want what do we need to do is we need to find out something another does nothing but we need to have two things one one is called as samples so the other thing is called as responses so what is samples so samples is nothing but the image data so what we will do is we will have a data that is nothing but uh, we will have an empty data of uh, of 100 variables so what we are trying to do is all these pixels that we get in so we will create a numpy dot empty so what is the this np dot empty which we are creating is we are creating an empty array of the size 0 to 100 or nothing but it can it will have for sizes from 0 to 100 so 100 values of intensities it can store then it will be of the form numpy of float 32 so what is numpy of float 32 see basically what we are trying to do is this contours is having information about each and every boundary so what we need is we need the intensity or the pixel levels of the digits 
so that digits will be stored in the variable called as samples which will store each and every data that we are training so pixel data intensity which we are training it will store for example you can just check out what it what this is doing is it will create zeros so it will create zeros so that you can store in the sample value so it is just creating an empty uh, like empty array of the size 0 to 100 so the maximum size is 100 so it is of the type numpy float 32 so what is float 32 it will store floating values so what this will store is it will store intensity values so what is the intensity values or pixel values of the images but we need to have another thing called as responses so responses is the keyboard input that the user gives so keyboard input whatever you type in so that will be the responses now what we will try to do is we will try to put in the keyboard inputs for each and every contour font so whenever a contour is displayed we should tell which is the key which is the re uh, like respective number that we are trying to find out so how do we do it is keys is equal to i for i in range 48 to 58 so why 48 to 58 you know that ascii values of 48 to 58 is representing the numbers 0 to uh, 9 so 0 to 9 is represented in the ascii range 48 to 58 so whatever you type in will be stored in the ascii range 48 to 58 so that is very important so all the data that your store keyboard input that you give is, is a ascii value so very important so you need to find out the ascii range so uh, it is taking in only keyboard uh, that is numbers from 48 to 58 so keys is nothing but the variable so it will take for i in range what of okay uh, i for i in range so this is how it works i for i in the range so it is considering only values from 48 to 58 so that is nothing but it will consider only keyboard inputs of 0 to 9 so if you enter anything other than that it won't consider so this is just a variable that i am uh, putting now so what we will do is we will take an individual contour so for c and t in contours that is nothing but how your for loop works so for each and every individual uh, contour in the whole contour range so what we will do is if cv2 dot contour area so if cv2 dot contour area so that area of the variable contour it, if it is greater than 50 so why we are doing this is pretty simple to understand so whenever you have digits here so whenever i have digits that is nothing but one two or three here but we we may have still we may have some impurities like uh, some line may be there like impurities may be there like a dot may be there or a small uh, slash may be there so all these things shouldn't be included only number should be included so that is why we are setting the contour area as minimum as 50 so 50 that is decided based upon this image so from this image uh, the best value of the contour area is 50 so if you are choosing any other image so then it depends on which uh, what is the size of the numbers in your uh, particular image so if your image has bigger uh, number so you can choose it as 100 so if your image has some dust or if it has some disturbances you can choose the bigger area of the disturbance so what we are telling is so many boundaries are found yeah so what we should try to consider here is uh, the first part that is what is the uh, area or what is the data that we are trying to do here so we will not be considering any areas which are less than 50 so ensure uh, to ensure that we are not getting any junk values or any disturbances or any any kind of uh, fake values or any kind of uh, like uh, what you call them as uh, unknown values or unwanted values will not be given so that is one criteria and next thing is only if the height is greater than 28 also we are considering so that is what we will be doing in this entire thing so contour area if it is greater than 50 so then what we will try to do is we will try to get the x y w h so what is this x y w h so x y w h is nothing but the variable so this x y w h what it what it is storing is it is storing the coordinates of the point so cv2 dot bounding rectangle so what is bounding rectangle so you can type in cv2 dot bounding rectangle of of the contour so what is this particularly doing is very simple to understand so whenever i have this data one so what we need to find out is as i told you x comma y so x comma y is nothing but my starting point so x comma y is my 
uh, starting coordinates of the point but only if i know the starting coordinates that is not enough for me so after finding out x comma y also what i need to find out is the next step so after finding out x comma y i need to find out the other points that is nothing but the width and the height so what is the width width is given by my variable w so then height is given by my variable h so this is width and this is height so these uh, four parameters we are trying to choose so all these parameters for each and every contour so each and every contour because cnt is for cnt in contours is telling you that for each and every contour in the whole contours so we are considering the area greater than 50 so after considering the area greater than 50 we are even finding out the xy point and the width and the height so what we'll do next is if height is greater than 28 so we are considering only quantities of height greater than 28 then what we will try to do is we'll draw a rectangle cv2 dot rectangle is a drawing function so we will draw a rectangle on that particular contour so we'll draw the rectangle for the um, on the image i am so i am is our image which is the point on which or the which is the top left point and the bottom right point that you need to draw uh, draw the rectangle x comma y is the top left point and how do you get the bottom right point it is pretty simple analogy so whenever you have x comma y so x plus w and y plus h will give you this bottom right point so you need to add width and height to get the bottom right point so how will you add that it is pretty simple x plus w comma y plus h so what we are trying to do is we are trying to find out each and every contour which has area greater than 50 and height greater than 28 and then we are trying to draw a rectangle on those contours so that is what we are trying to do then why are we drawing this rectangle is for you to type in the keyboard input so you should get to know which is the contour area upon that you should type in the keyboard input so after you type in the keyboard input we will map the pattern so for this uh, area or for this contour or for this boundary which contains the intensity and pixels what is the uh, keyboard input you need to find out that that is what you need to recognize here so which colored bgr so red colored uh, rectangle we'll draw and the thickness will be 2 so this is the first thing that we'll do so then what we will try to do is we'll try to uh, find out the region of interest so what is region of interest is the pixels so what is region of interest here so region of interest here is this green colored uh, rectangle so uh, only this pixel area we need because we are storing this and we are uh, entering a keyboard input so we will enter a keyboard input and we are storing this letter so this pixel intensity values and the corresponding keyboard input we will try to store so that is why our region of interest is only this area so what is our region of interest thresholding will give you uh, i mean uh, your contouring will give you just the area so you need to store it in the image form so in the thresholded image so thresh is the thresholded whole image in that my area of interest is from y to y plus h so out of the thresholded i need y to y plus h then x to x plus w so this is the whole image that i want so i don't want this entire image i just i just want the region of interest so what i will do is storing the intensity so for example if i consider this case what i am trying to do is i am trying to only store the uh, contour values belonging to the 9 so how will i get this in the thresholded image i am telling my uh, variation is x to x plus w and y to y, uh, y plus h so i'm telling that this is my entire area so what is x and y that is the area of the contour so this intensity values of the thresholded image we are trying to store so that is what we did right now so we are storing it in roi okay so then if you want to uh, check roi uh, roi is a very big image so we'll resize it to a smaller image so why we should resize in order to make our uh, machine learning process simple so if we don't resize we will get a very large image so that is why we will resize it to a 10 cross 10 image so we are making it a smaller image so that our machine learning program will become very much easier okay so now if you want to sh uh, see the particular thing or if you want to see see it you can see, uh, see it but before seeing it uh, we have one more thing okay if you want to see it it is cv2.im show if you want to see the roi so let us see the roi first uh, we can use this uh, window function then we can mention the roi 
So ROI is the image. So if you want to see that, you can see. So what is ROI exactly doing? Okay. So see the first thing, letter nine. So the contour area of nine is being selected. So this is the contour area. So with this, I am trying to store my value. So I've drawn a rectangle here. So inside this rectangle, I've taken the contour area belonging to nine. So it is like a continuous loop, which will loop through all the digits that it has found through this entire uh, range. So for each and every contour, we are trying to do it. So if you want to see ROI small, so that will be just a 10 cross 10 image that will be really small. See, the, you can't even make out it is a very small image. So that is how it is forming. So each and every contour is being taken into consideration. So then we are reducing this. Okay. So now what we need to do is uh, we need to uh, wait for the C, uh, keys. So what we need to do is we need to take in the user input. So key is nothing but CV2 dot wait key is nothing but it will wait until a user enters an input. So what is zero zero is the default keyboard. So if you are having external keyboard, then you need to use one. So since so the CV2 dot wait key is nothing but waiting for the keyboard input. So uh, it is waiting for the user to enter his input. So what we are trying to do is we are finding out the contours. We are taking in the area of the contour and storing it in ROI and resizing it to ROI small. Then we wait for the uh, user to enter something on the keyboard. So why? Because area is getting known. Okay, I can find out the area, I can find out the threshold. But uh, for our pattern or for our machine learning algorithm, main thing is we need to enter something from the keyboard. So that is very important. So if key is equal to 27, that is nothing but ASCII value of my uh, exit or what, what we call is ASCII value of my escape key. So if I press on escape, then it will stop uh, taking a response from the user else. So elif key in keys. So what is key in keys? So I have named the variable keys here. So if the key belongs to some variable in 48 to 58, if it is a number, only if it is a number. So we have responses uh, dot append. So what is responses? You already know it is an empty list dot append the keyboard input. So what is the key? That is nothing but int of character of key. So which is telling me that it is a ASCII value of the particular uh, key, a uh, keyboard value that I am entering. So that will be taken uh, into consideration. So int of character of key. So this is, this is the thing that I have taken into consideration. So after that, what we need to do, we need to store our image data also. Image data will be stored in sample. So sample is nothing but ROI small. That is the resized uh, part of our image dot reshape comma one comma hundred. So what is reshape one zero uh, sorry one comma hundred is telling you that it is uh, reshaping or it is converting into a quantity which is uh, which is from one to hundred. So we are resizing the values so that it can be stored inside a document or for our machine learning algorithm to train, we are resizing those particular uh, image quantities. So what is ROI? So one doubt everyone might have. So what is this ROI? So I can print this uh, nothing but, okay, I can uh, just remove these parts one second. So then I can print this ROI small. So what will this ROI small contain? So it will contain uh, one second. I will remove this part also. So I will try to print what is this ROI small. So if I want to print out ROI small, yes, this is an very big matrix of numbers. So those, this is nothing but an image matrix that we are having. So even ROI small is a 10, uh, 10 cross 10 image, which has a lot of values of, uh, of my intensity. So this, that is why we need to convert them into our reshape form. So what is reshape form? Reshape form is nothing but it is telling you that we are converting it to a quantity and we are converting it into a one dimensional array. So very important to convert into one dimensional array and restricting our values from zero to hundred. So we are reshaping it using our numpy function. Then samples is nothing but my empty. So what is samples numpy dot empty. So this numpy dot empty is storing what? This uh, samples was an empty list, em empty numpy array. So what this is store is all the image information. Why I can't store it in a normal list is because normal list can store only one dimensional data, but this can store multi-dimensional data like matrices. So that is why we created an um, empty numpy array. So we have even printed that MP, empty numpy array. So that we will be using to store our 
image sample so image sample is nothing but my numerical value of data so numpy dot append uh, to samples what i will append is uh, i will append sample so to samples i will append sample so after appending uh, do i need to have any scaling factor no i don't need any scaling factor so that's why i'll give zeros here so this is what we will do so for uh, for each and every uh, is samples is nothing but for each and every contour information i get so that is converted into region of interest so from the thresholded image we will take a small part of the uh, region of interest that is from x to x plus w and y to y plus h so we also saw how small is that uh, contoured region after convert taking that we will convert it into a 10 cross 10 then what we are doing is this thing we will try to make it into a one dimensional array and store values from 1 to 100 so that it is not uh, making things much complicated in terms of storing data for our machine learning so more complex data you have difficult to perform machine learning so we are trying to simplifying it by reshaping it then we are storing it in a numpy array called as sample so that is what we are trying to do here so we are appending sample to samples here so samples is an empty numpy array this sample is nothing but each and every contoured region image that we have reshaped so that is what we are trying to do it here okay so now what we will try to do is we will uh, we will come out of this loop now so we got the samples and everything so again uh, whatever responses that we get that is nothing but our uh, keyboard responses also that also we need to convert it into a numpy array because responses are just ascii characters if we convert it them to numpy array then it will be easy for us to compare the sample images as well as our keyboard input so now np dot array is nothing but a uh, numpy array so responses we will convert them so we will convert them into float numpy dot float 32 is nothing but it will be converted into a floating value that is nothing but we are converting the keyboard responses which the user enters into floating value so then we need to reshape it so responses so we will reshape it to a one dimensional value so responses dot reshape so we will reshape it into a one dimensional value so uh, we will consider responses dot size so responses dot size and we will use this one to reshape our value so what we are trying to do is we are reshaping our responses also that is what we are doing so after that we were, we need to print out our uh, training is complete so what we are trying to do is we are trying to uh, give, an tra give a training image then we are trying to find out what are all the uh, numbers inside the training image then each and every small contour of that uh, individual number we will take we will ask the user to enter the keyboard input that values and the region of interest that is nothing but the contours value we are storing it in samples keyboard input will be stored in responses so after doing that again we can uh, convert them into numpy responses that is okay okay we can convert them into numpy not necessary but we, we we can use this also so still it is not converted to numpy float 32 or floating values we can uh, convert them into floating values just in case if it is not converted in any cases so we'll just convert make sure that all these are in numpy float 32 what is numpy float 32 it is nothing but a floating value of numbers in multi dimension so whenever you have multi dimensional values we tend to use numpy and if there are a lot of numbers we will try to use numpy so then we will write this image so cv2.im write is nothing but we'll save the image as nothing but a uh, train result train underscore result dot png so what image we will store is we will store this uh, im image as train underscore result so what is train underscore result is that will show you all the contours so im will be stored there so then uh, what we need to store is np dot save text so we need to save the responses that the user has entered as well as the sample of images so np dot save text we can name it as uh, general samples uh, dot data so general samples dot data format we can name it so that is not a problem so this is one uh, file that we are taking so then what we will store is we will store the samples here so what are samples image data so then the same thing uh, we can save it as general responses dot data so we can store the keyboard responses 
so general responses dot data we will store the keyboard responses here so we'll store the keyboard responses so this ends our entire process now we'll see how it is actually working in a real scale okay one second so there is one problem uh, that is with the ro it is ro is small dot reshape okay it is a uh, uh, another uh, bracket needs to be added here okay cv2 dot wait key k is again a uh, capital here so that is one more error so i forgot okay uh okay that part is done but i need to show the image also right so that is one problem here so i need to use this function also so here i need to mention cv2.im show because uh, you need to see where the contours are right so that is very important so i will show that this is a normal image so then i will show the im here so this im will be the image so what i am trying to do is i will show the image i will try i will draw the contours and i will show each and every image so that you i, I will show the contour so that you can you can put the keyboard response okay so now uh, we will understand how this entire process is working so now first contour is drawn for this number 7 so we have drawn a red colored rectangle so uh, stating that this is the exact contour we need to find out so what is the contour it has found out 7 now you need to enter the keyboard input 7 so then 4 then again a 4, again a 4, then 7. So it is automatically finding out contours and drawing red uh, rectangle. So you need to be entering your keyboard values. You need to keep on entering your keyboard values. So I am pressing 4 now. So it again I got a con contour of 8, 2, 1, 6, 3, 3, uh, 9, 5 and again 6 I have got. See how it is finding contours is whichever is uh, easy to find out it is finding those contours and then it is trying to move ahead so then 0 then 1 then 8 8 again a 2 so again a 6 again a 4 uh, 5 4 again a 4 so you can train each and every individual value so that it gets trained perfectly so 5 so that is how we are training each and every values individually so like this you can take in many inputs that is nothing but of uh, all the digits so you can enter in all the digits information and then you can complete the training process. So once you give all the information of the digits so then the training process will be complete so we will get a message stating that the training is complete. But what are, what are we doing actually and why did we do all these things is very simple to understand guys. So you need to have an idea right now of what we did entirely. So we had this uh, image, so out of this we are trying to find out contours, so once we find out contours, we are entering the keyboard response. So what we are trying to do is, we are trying to store the keyboard responses. So part uh, the first part is we are trying to store the keyboard responses, so you can ch just check in, check in the uh, data that is nothing but our samples data so samples is nothing but all the image information so all the contour image information is stored in samples so what we are having is you can open this also so you can open this with notepad and similarly you can open this with uh, again with the notepad so then you will have a very good idea of what is exactly happening so okay now we open the two notepad documents so this is notepad 1 this is the sample data and this is the uh, response data so sample data and response data i have for 7 this is the contour values intensity values of the colors so for 4 this is the value for again 4 this is the value for 4 and 7 so for all the uh, values that i have trained so here are the contour values so exactly the same contour values i have here so these are the image values that is stored in samples same thing the keyboard responses are stored in the general responses dot data so responses is keyboard samples is nothing nothing but the image data so this is what we get at the last so the entire whole process of this train program 
what is the entire use of this train program is to uh, train the model or we are not training any model what we are trying to do is we are trying to generate data what is the data that we are trying to generate this is the sample or image intensity value data that we are uh, also generating the sample responses that is nothing but the keyboard responses so now we have x versus y so still we have not implemented our machine learning algorithm what we have done till now is we have our x data that is the image data and y data we have the nothing but our uh, uh, the data that we have is nothing but uh, the keyboard responses data so x versus y if you build upon a classification algorithm like k means clustering or k uh, not k means clustering it is a classification k nearest neighbors logistic regression so any of those uh, classification algorithms we can try to build out so then we uh, if, what we will do is we will give the image to the uh, to the algorithm itself so that algorithm only will predict what is the number so i will give the image it will only find contours and it will only predict the numbers at the end so this is the whole process of our entire project so we just completed the first process that is nothing but we have completed the training and with the training i can uh, assure you that you have trained some data that is present in nothing but our project so where is a uh, here is a project so we have general samples and general responses now what we need to do is we have already uh, generated the data set for this project now nowhere we have actually done our machine learning part so what we need to do is we need to continue doing our machine learning part so how will we do our machine learning part is i will create another python program so i will go to file uh, again new file so i will save this as uh, test.py so this is my test.py uh this test.py uh will take in the data set that we have generated from our first program that is nothing but the responses on the keyboard and the corresponding pixel or intensity value so that is acting like a training data set whatever we have so in this test.py also it will be almost similar but we will uh, take in an algorithm that shall so we'll import our cv2 or import our numpy as np so we'll uh, import these two then what we need to import us we need to load those files so samples is equal to np dot load text so what is np dot load text load text is nothing but we have saved these responses right that is nothing but our general samples and general responses so we need to load them again so how do we load them it is simple you need to mention the file name so what are those file names general responses dot data and general samples dot data so first we will take in the samples so we will copy the name of file path of this so we'll paste it here so this is the file format that we are storing so again then responses is equal to np dot load date np dot load txt so the same thing but uh, we need to show know the responses data uh, that is nothing but we need to know the responses file name so we'll copy this so this is our responses file name so these two files we have and we are storing it in variables samples and responses so you can print out samples and you can print out responses to see whether we have got the data properly or not so what are samples samples are nothing but my image data of all the nothing but of all the training that i have done so that is my data then once uh, that is nothing but responses is nothing but how many characters i have trained so 7 point 4 point all those things are there so what we will do is we will try to reshape it so what we will do is we'll try to reshape our responses why we need to reshape our responses is because we need to convert them into a one dimensional text data or one dimensional numerical data so responses is equal to responses dot reshape so reshape is nothing but when you take in something in the form of numpy so we need to reshape in the form of regular number so that you can use it for your uh, algorithm so that is very impo important so even though it is a number it is a numpy format number so numpy format numbers are uh, used to store large numbers with very less amount of memory so we need to convert them into a regular number so that is why we are using this uh, responses dot size comma one is nothing but we need just single variables that is 1 2 3 we don't need all those 20 or 30 new uh, decimal points with those we'll just need 
the one whole number that's it so that is why responses dot size is one so this is how we are reshaping it okay so next what is the thing that we will try to do is we have loaded the files that is the samples file and response file which we are trained which we are generated earlier using this train dot py so we loaded that then what we need to do is we need to take in the test image so the test image image i've just copied so this is my test image so 3.14159 so this is all the test image that i need so this test image what is the next step i need to do is i need to read this text image calculate that is nothing but gray values calculate the thresholding values calculate the contours then from that i need to actually what i need to do is i need to i uh, put my k nearest neighbor algorithm and predict what is this particular uh, contour uh, equivalent to so the, the algorithm should predict what is this particular contour equal to it should predict the numerical values 3 1 4 so operations must be done by this particular example so what we will do is we will first uh, set up our uh, algorithm that is nothing but uh, we will set up our k uh, k nearest neighbors algorithm so model is equal to uh there is two different types of k nearest neighbor algorithm so this k nearest neighbors algorithm works well for our uh nothing but our uh, image data so other k nearest neighbor algorithms works well for our uh, nothing but our csv file so text data is different image data is different why image data is different it is a multi dimensional matrix so we have a k nearest algorithm in our cv2 only so we can use cv2. Dot Uh, ml dot k nearest neighbor so that is also possible so we can use this algorithm because it is good for our nothing but our it will be good for our images so that is why we are using so model is nothing but cv two dot ml dot k nearest dot create so we have created a k nearest neighbor model so after that we need to train our model so how will we train our model so model dot train so you need to think guys you need to think here so we this train dot py didn't do anything it just generated the corresponding samples that is nothing but our data which is our responses that we have given from the keyboard and the corresponding data that is nothing but the contour samples in the form of intensity of pixel so those two things we got but we need to train our algorithm so how will we train we need to train our what do we need to train we need to train our samples with responses so samples and what we need to do is after tra uh, training the samples so we need to tell that this samples must be arranged in the form of rows samples so we uh, the training should happen in the form of rows so we will tell that cv2.ml.row and uh, row sample so this is telling that training should happen in the form of rows so in one row in uh, it must happen row wise and all those rows will belong to uh, like Uh, the training is happening in the form of row wise so that is what we need to understand right now so why the training needs to happen row wise because our x is nothing but my samples and what is my y y is nothing but my responses so we have created a model now so this model dot train will train our samples versus responses so this will train our samples versus responses in the form of row so in one row we will have all the samples that is nothing but you can open this so we have uh, our model to train for our that is nothing but our samples and responses now what we need to do is how do we uh, like take in the input data for testing so how do we take in input data is we need to read this image which is the image which we need to read is nothing but we need to read read this test image and perform the same operations again so we need to perform the blurring operations thresholding operations all those need to be done so you can go to train dot py and copy the same thing that is nothing but you can copy the whole thing that is till here and you can paste it back so you can copy this thing because we will be doing the same thing the same operations which are explained for the testing will be done for even for our training so we don't need to copy anything so we can uh, leave that copy so we can do this uh, im is equal to cv2 dot read uh, this is uh, that is nothing but we will not read train dot png will read test dot png so this is the change so then again converting it to grayscale same function doing the gaussian blur to remove that 3.14 that point will be removed so you might ask why we did that gaussian blur because we needed to remove this point so this point need not be considered as a contour so that is why we removed and again we have all those functions right to so the 
height greater than 28 and the size of the area contour area should be greater than 50 so those all will eliminate our nothing but uh, all those things will eliminate our whole process but what we need to do is we need to make our algorithm predict some value so it should predict mathematical value so that mathematical value should be printed so how will we print we will create a black colored image first so how do we click uh, create a black colored images uh, we need to use an image called as output image so I will call it out so what is the thing when you create a black image so how is black image defined it is defined as zero so we can create using numpy so np dot zeros will create zero uh, zeros but what is the size we need to create it should be same as our test image so im dot shape will give me the test image size so you can print out the test image size also what is the test image size is print im dot shape you can check out what is im dot shape that is nothing but it will tell you what is the width and height of the image and what is the dimension of the image I, width and height of the image okay uh, what we did was we uh, took it in the form of uh, image dot shape so that should be a numpy unsigned integer of 8 bit so let us not take in a float it should be a numpy unsigned integer of 8 bit so we'll now we'll try to print our image shape so what happened okay just got some error here okay so the error is because uh, the input to the model will be only a numpy array so you need to take it as a numpy float 32 here so that is why it is giving you an error so it, the error is because your machine learning algorithm will take your numpy arrays as input so you need to give numpy arrays as input so numpy is nothing but the data format it is a floating point so you are taking all these data as numpy floating 32 bit uh, in 32 bit floating value so here also we take it took it as a 32 bit floating value so fine so now it won't give error i think yes so it is not giving an error so it is telling me uh, the shape of my test image is 450 cross 300 into 3 so what is 450 cross 300 we can go right click and go to properties here so after we go to properties we need to go to details so it is telling me that it is uh, 650 uh, 450 is the height 600 is the width that is fine but what is 3 3 is telling me that there are 3 colored values so it is represented by r g and b so that is what we are doing so what we are trying to do here is we are creating a picture of black image but why because the algorithm should predict the number so i will write it in the form of an image so I can use the cv2.im show to show what is that uh, like the black picture all about. So you can keep it as an uh, output image. So since it doesn't have any numbers that is written using cv2.txt. So it doesn't give you anything. But now you can see that it is a black image. On this our machine learning algorithm should predict numbers. So whatever numbers that are there here. Wow, that is nothing but whatever numbers I have in my project that is this test.png so the same thing must be predicted here so whatever the numbers that I have here the same thing must be predicted using my machine learning algorithm so I should get this output here so this is the algorithm predicted values not the values that are there in the image so these things you need to understand why we created the black image to show our output okay so then we what we need to do is we need to do the same thing that is nothing but finding the contours and all those uh, simple operations making sure that we are not uh, losing out on all the information so you can uh, copy the same thing because we will copy for okay contours and hierarchy that is the same so we need to find the contours again so after finding the contours that is nothing but the boundaries again we need to find so that we need to give it to our algorithm so contours is nothing but contours and hierarchy i have told you two variables that will find out the boundaries so how many boundaries are there and it will fetch out the x y z x y and w h coordinate so i'm just copying it from my uh, nothing but my train.py so similarly you can copy from this also for contours for cnt in contours you can copy till your ROI is small because we are doing the same thing see both are same here we are generating in train.py we were entering input now we were we will not enter any responses 
we will ask the algorithm to predict what is the responses based upon the training data set that we have created so how did we create the training data set using the responses and samples so now we have our contour area is greater than 50 that is fine then if contour, see what we did was we found out contours then if contour area for each and every contour in the contours we are seeing whether it is greater than 50 then if height is greater than 28 so we are considering that so we will draw a rectangle stating that uh, this is the particular data that uh, the, the contour that is found and then we are again resizing it and we are putting it into a, a 10 cross 10 resized value so we are taking the only the area of the so we just considered a case where we just resized our image so what we need to do next is after resizing so we need to uh, take in the resized image that is done after resizing we will again reshape it so what is reshaping is to see here uh, the algorithm which we trained so that is nothing but the cv uh, model dot k nearest neighbor which we changed so that was a float 32 and and it was resized also so what we need to do is we need to resize this and give it to the algorithm now so roi small is equal to roi small dot resize resizing is nothing but whatever we have here so here we are resizing the image into a 10 cross 10 image so here what we are doing is we are reshaping it so we should not resize it we should reshape this particular thing so what is reshaping it converting it to into a one dimensional float value so we are reshaping this particular thing so reshaping 1 to 100 so what i did was i i was just printing out all the image matrix so if i print out roi small this will this will look like this but when I reshape it, it will come into a one dimensional array. So that is what I am doing. So reshaping is what is, it is converting the entire image to a one dimensional array. So I just printed out, this will be a multi dimensional array. I do not want multi dimensional array because I cannot give it to the algorithm because it is a very strenuous process for the algorithm to work with multi dimensional array. So that is why when dealing with images, always reshape them into a 1 comma 100 is nothing but it will be in one row the maximum columns will be 100 so that is what is 1 comma 100 okay so then uh, what we need to do is we will uh, convert it into a float 32 value so what is float 32 value it will be a floating point value so np, np dot float 32 it will be a 32 bit floating value so the uh, like the variable will also be a floating value now so that is not a problem now what we need to do is we need to put that into a we need to give this image like nothing but our uh, values as an input to our algorithm. So if we give it, give this as an input to the algorithm, our algorithm should predict what? It should predict the actual numbers. Okay. So now to predict the numbers, uh, we have four things. So what is nothing but a uh, return value as one of the outputs it gives. Results is one of the output it gives. Then neighbor responses. So what is neighbor responses? and it will give distances so since we are using a k nearest neighbor algorithm we are interested in the results so what is return value is if it is uh, if the algorithm is working properly then it will give a true or false so return value is true or false neighbor responses is nothing but as i told you how a k nearest neighbor works so it sees the respective neighbor's decision so what is the neighbor's decision based upon that it will give output so neighbor responses is nothing but what is the output which the neighbors gave and distances is nothing but as i told you we have two types of distances one is euclidean distance and the other one is manhattan distance so it is trying to calculate the distances even that output will also be given but all those things we don't need we need the results that is nothing but what numbers our algorithm has predicted when we give these contoured pictures so what is what will our algorithm predict that information we need so for that we will use model dot find nearest so find nearest is the thing that we will search for find nearest is the function so what we need to search for we need to search for roi small so what is roi small each and every contour the number is finding that contours resized value then we have reshaped into a one dimensional number after reshaping it we are converting into floating value that floating value is this roi small so image which has been resized reshaped and converted into a floating value is this roi small then i need to mention what is the k value so now i am mentioning k as one you can take it as three five seven or anything so that is not a problem 
so now what i will do is i will create a variable called string so that will store my result so str of integer why because it will be in the ascii value i need to convert them back to my uh, integer values but i can put text so we had seen the function called cv2 dot put text so that will take an string as only the input not numbers so that is why i am converting them into a string so int of string of so string of int of results so what is int of results so results is nothing but the data which our algorithm is predicted so 0 cross 0 is nothing but the res first result it is predicting so since k nearest neighbors will predict multiple results so there are numbers from 0 to 9 by the order of its uh, accuracy it is predicting uh, first it will predict 3 5 7 so depending upon the uh, like the since this is a machine learning model it will predict in the order so first one is it will uh, with most accuracy it will predict 5 second with lesser accuracy it will predict 3 so it will give multiple results but we will take in the most uh, accurately predicted results so that is how we are taking results of 0 of 0 so string is nothing but because cv2 dot put text is a function where we can write something to our black colored image that is the numbers so after uh, writing the text but we also need to consider the other point that we will consider the maximum result or the best result available 0 0 is the first predicted value so you will have other results also but we don't consider the other results because we need the result which is predicted with most accuracy or it is nothing but you, you can give uh, how the algorithm works is first it will predict the value so consider we have uh, we have the numbers we have the number 7 with us so that number 7 first it will with accuracy with accuracy it will predict as number 7 then with lesser accuracy with the same number it can predict as number 5 also so the algorithm is working in such a way that it will predict the results best results first then it will give the second results so results of 0 0 is giving you the best results 0 results of 0 1 will give you the second best like if it has predicted the best values like uh, the 7 is the best result for this particular contour so other than 7 it will predict the second best so it might be look it might be looking like 4 the so second one will be 4 like that we have multiple results but we will take in only the best results okay so now we will put out put the string so what is put text put text is nothing but it will write something on the uh, image so what is the image that we are looking at we are looking at the image that is nothing but out is the image that is the black colored image so for that black colored image we will put our string that is all the data that we have so what we will try to do is we will try to start from uh, the contours only because we will try to put that at the respective contours so how will we put that is after finding out uh, after we predict some value that is 3 we will put that 3 in the same place where it was in the test image so how do we get that is pretty simple so we here we have our test image so we will have a black image of the same size so when i recognize this as a 3 so that should be put in the same uh, dimension or the same place so how can i put it i need to mention the uh, like the nothing but my starting and ending point so x will be my starting point y plus h will be my ending point so x x comma y plus h is nothing but the location so x plus x comma y plus h is telling me that is the location where i need to put my particular thing uh, that is nothing but data so then i will try to uh, tell the size size will be 1 so after telling the size i need to tell which is the color so i will use green color that is b g r so i will use green color here so after using my green color as my string it will write each and everything so this is a for loop so don't forget this is for contour and contours this is for loop for each and every contour it is checking area is greater than 50 it is checking whether the height of that contour is greater than 28 then it will draw a rectangle so after drawing a rectangle it is trying to uh, reshape resize do uh, all the resizing operations converting into a numpy then putting it in the algorithm so after the algorithm is predicting that is stored in results we are converting it into a string so we are writing it in a black colored screen so the position is also same because this is a for loop for each and every contour it will calculate x y w and h so we are putting it in the position and writing a green color text equivalent out of the string so string will be nothing but our first predicted value so this contour it will do the for loop for the entire contour so hence we are predicting it for each and every contour in our particular image so then what i will do is i will use the cv2.im show 
to show the output so i will show the inputs of us so input will be our uh, im image so then we will show the output that is cv2.im show which is my output image so out will be my output image so output image is shown now the out will store the values that the algorithm has predicted so now let us run my code okay so this is the input image that i have so what is this this is the input image so what it is doing is it is able to find the contours and predict the riddle so 3141569 so each and every values it is trying to find the contours and this is the output which my algorithm has predicted so this is very important so this is the output which my algorithm has predicted so this is the actual output that the algorithm has predicted and we have printed that on the black colored image using the out image that we have created that is numpy of zeros of the same size of the input image so this is how contours are being formed this contours when given to the algorithm algorithm is predicting all these values so this is the entire project on digit recognition where we use all the examples of reading images and calculating the blurring thresholding contouring and then uh, the operations of drawing rectangle the operations of putting a text then we use the k nearest model to train our uh, samples versus responses and get the output so this is the whole project that we were able to do uh, using the data so uh, this project will help you do handwriting recognition so instead of the train image which you have given it as uh, for example a uh, number so you can give a picture of your handwriting so you can give a picture of your handwriting in this train image so you can uh, give a uh, give a picture in which it which contains your handwriting or a text also so what you need to do is you need to train for your handwriting and text the only change in the program is you need to go to this train.py instead of 48 to 58 give the ascii range which you are training for whether it is more small letter or capital letter give the ascii range and test it against the value so that you can get text equivalent so this is the project that we did with the help of image processing and machine learning so i hope you have understood the project i'll be putting the source code and also the image to try it out so please do try it out and please do implement this use cases in different scenarios that will be helpful for you thank you